All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Tuesday Notary Titans for Tuesday, May 18th, 2021. My name is Bill Soroka. I am the author of Sign and Thrive, How to Make Six Figures as a Mobile Notary and Loan Signing Agent. And I'm the host of the Side Hustle Lounge podcast, where we get to talk about legit business opportunities, personal growth and development, lifestyle design, and adventure. Thank you so much for being here. I'm here with uh, two of my uh, co-hosts, uh, Laura Bewer and Carol Ray, which I think they're both uh, just having some technical issues and will join us here in just a moment. Uh, how the calls work. The TNT is like an old fashioned call in radio show, except uh, we're live on camera. So you're gonna use the Zoom feature to actually raise your hand and ask a question. When we call on you, if you would please tell us your name, uh, if we don't know it already, the state that you're in, because that has an impact on our answers, and then directly ask your question. If we need some backup, we'll definitely get in there and ask you for that as well. These replays are posted to my YouTube channel at youtube.com forward, forward slash notary coach. Uh, plus, we send them out via email as well. Laura, are you back on with us? I think I talked too fast. Carol Ray, are you on with us? I am. Sorry. I, hey. I was on a wrong link. Yeah, no problem. Glad you made it. Would you like to introduce yourself to the audience? Sure. Um, my name is Carol Ray, and I'm the founder and owner of Notary2Pro.com, retired escrow officer, manager, and in business teaching notaries all over the country for almost 12 years now. Awesome, Carol, love that you made it. Do we get to see you on camera today? Uh, I don't know if you want to. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, in my, I'm in my new office. Oh, I love it. Uh, let's see. Beautiful. I have a room now, it's just my office and my new digs. Oh my God, did we have a storm? Are there Texans out there today? Oh. I think we have quite a few. Yes, quite yeah. a few. The lightning, the thunder for hours, and it just, it was those little crack, crack. And we finally, this is not the first storm. It's like every other day, there's storms now. But we lost our electricity just for a couple hours. But oh my God, it's scary. <laughs> I'm so glad that you made it back just in time for TNT. It's meant to be. All right. And then I'd like, uh, Laura, I'm so glad that you made it I'm as here. well. Would you like to introduce yourself as well? Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Laura Bewer with CoachMelora.com, and I'm a notary coach who helps people either master their uh, presentation skills for their loan signing documents in that process or needs a little assistance with their basic foundational notary skills, and it's state-specific. And I also have the Laura Bewer Presents Replay Library, where you can build lines of specialty in the general world. So if any of that sounds like something with your name on it, give me a call. Love it. I have put the links to all three of our websites so you can learn, explore, and get all the info you need on any of, of the uh, hosts of TNT today. Let's jump in. We've already got some hands up. I'm sure we're going to have some great questions today. Rosetta Easley, thank you so much for being here. If you want to unmute, tell everybody what state you're from and ask your question. Hello, everyone. I'm Rosetta Easley from Wilmington, Delaware. Um, I am asked, I would like to ask the question about other um, streams of income as far as being a notary public. I have, um, I have seen some of the videos with the NNA and some other videos out there with different um, ways that you can, um, you know, make money being a notary. I've, um, I've completed the certificate for a field inspector and also a wedding officiant. Now I see on um, NNA, there's a class, a training for immigration specialists. So that is something that I would like to get into as well. Um, I see that um, the general, the kind of like the general notary work is where I've been leaning more to, more so than loan signing. But I wanted to ask um, you guys, what are, what are your inputs as far as the in, um, immigration specialists, if you don't mind? Yeah, great question. Laura, would you like to jump on this one? Sure. Um, so immigration specialists, just for everybody to know what that is, 
because not everybody does know. And that would be a person that for hire will help another person uh, fill out their immigration forms. And you don't have to be an attorney to do this, but you're really a form preparer. You cannot give legal advice. Uh, and so some states have requirements in order to step into that role. I don't know off the top what Delaware has, if it has any. Some states have no requirements and you can just open up business and do it. Some require to have a special bond, some require to have training. Uh, so you have to find out, uh, and the NNA can tell you if that's where you're looking at for your training, what the requirements would be for your state if there are any uh, investment requirements you need to worry about. Okay. Okay, that, uh, it just seems like that's something that I would really like to um, um, get into. I have a couple of um, co-workers who um, saw that, you know, who know that I'm a notary and they've also gone and got their commission. So they're like, oh, we're going to build a team. I said, let's do that. <laughs> so, that. So, um, so this has been really, instead of, you know, it started out like a quote unquote side hustle, but it's really turning out to be something that I am enjoying. I really enjoy doing. And, um, and I'm looking here in the future to, um, I'm doing it part-time, but actually to do it full-time now to leave the hospital and do this as a full-time gig for me. And I thank you guys, because I watch your videos. I watch, you know, your YouTube things. And I, I'm trying to, I try to get on TNT every Tuesday to, um, even if not tax a question, just hear what everyone is talking about. So I appreciate all the input and all the information you guys put out there. Thank you so much. You're so welcome, Rosetta, and welcome. I love that you're loving your business as much as we do. There is so much opportunity. And the only thing that I'd like to um, kind of uh, piggyback on here, when it comes to creating additional streams of revenue in your business, I invite you to remember that it's not always um, the uh, additional stream of revenue or the business or the service or whatever it is, isn't necessarily associated with your uh, notary public commission. There's a lot that we can do under our notary umbrella is what I like to call it. Uh, sometimes mm -hmm. it has to do with your commission certificate. Sometimes it's not like the wedding officiant is a great example. Some States you can officiate weddings just by having your notary public commission, but mm -hmm. in most States you can't. So in most States you have to just go out and become a wedding officiant and then become a notary public. So they're separate, but together you can build that under your notary umbrella. And there's so many other opportunities. The field inspection is a really natural fit. The uh, fingerprinting is a really natural mm. fit on that. Okay. And, and if you don't listen to the Side Hustle Lounge podcast yet, uh, this summer's lineup is going to be amazing. The fingerprinting, the field inspection, the whole deal. We're going to have special guests talking about all of these on there too. But also, uh, Laura, myself, we have great YouTube content as well. And Carol talking about all these additional revenue streams that you have there. It's not just all about the loan signings. And that's what makes this yeah. so exciting. Yes, love thank, it, Rosetta. You. thank you for being here. All right, Melissa Dominguez, always a pleasure to see you on here. How's life in California? <laughs> oh, 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 Lindsay jumping in there. Hold on. Oh, sorry. Yep, no problem. <laughs> all right, there you go, Melissa. Okay. I have a hi, everybody. Thank you all for everything you do for us every day. I never talk much because I'm nervous like that but I can do the loan docs because I know what to say but <laughs> you know what I mean anyways um, I had a question on deeds um, I had um, uh, many part signing but um, there was deeds to the metro they were doing the under underground thing but there wasn't any notary awarding or anything so just in general for future i don't know that it ever got stuck in my head deeds will always need to be have a cert even if it if it doesn't say anything like that at the bottom or something are you asking if every deed will yeah. have a notarial certificate okay so uh laura i'd like you to take this one you would, would you? Yes. So, you know, in general, generally speaking, deeds are about property, real property, and for them to be recorded, need to have a notarial act accompany the signature. 
Is it possible that there is a deed out there that does not require a notarial act? It, maybe it is possible. Um, for From our perspective, that would not be the question. The question I would ask is, if I'm being asked to notarize, I need a notary certificate. So that's where our perspective is, is if you're asking me to notarize a deed and there's no notary wording to be found, what kind do you want? I'll add it. So if they were asked, inviting you to notarize a deed and there was no notary wording, your question would be, what kind of notarization uh, do you require for this? Not one, it'd be okay maybe just to ask that question because maybe they- Well, you need to ask the question okay. because if you don't ask the question, you cannot notarize it if there's no wording. See, there could be a reason why there's no wording. Maybe it wasn't meant to be notarized. That could be one reason. Another reason could be they were just given verbal instructions to get it notarized and it isn't on the document where it's expecting you uh, to provide your own certificate, right? So there could be instructions in the document. There could be verbal instructions. It could be they just thought it was a good idea or there could be notary wording on it. All of those ways tell me what notarization. And I'm not the one that's in charge of deciding what kind of notarization is required. The document has to tell me or the signer has to tell me. And if there's no wording, I would ask, what kind do you need or do you even need it, right? Sometimes people jump to assumptions that they need to have it done. So it really always goes back to the signer or your customer. Okay, <clears throat> thank you. All right, and I have another question for Carol. You said there was some other group for older crowd. <laughs> Not too old. Carol, where'd you go? I was being Carol, can you talk I was about just being polite, <laughs> staying muted. <laughs> um, Yes, as a matter of fact, I was just going to announce that we're having a, a meeting on Wednesday and it's 7 p.m. my time. I'm in the central uh, time zone. But yeah, it's um, most of my students, I've, I've said this many times in the last four years, are seniors. It used to be the 20s and the 30 years old, but there's a lot happening to seniors in this country today. They are having to turn to alternative uh, lifestyles and incomes. Um, and uh, so we've started a group called Prime Time Notaries. And we have get togethers just once a month. And we discuss some of the issues that face uh, some of us that are older. I'm 78, <laughs> scares the heck out of me to think I'm that close to 80, but um, the limbs haven't fallen off yet. So I guess I'm okay. But yeah, we're, anybody's welcome to join us though, but it's very, um, we have guests and we, we answer questions and we discuss things that really concern uh, people. So you can find it by going to notarypro.com and it'll say enter here. And when you enter on that page, you're gonna see things like everything TNT and primetime notary and it'll give you the links on how to join us. Um, we get pretty busy, so you might want to get in early. Okay, thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks, everybody. Every All right. Well, thank you, Melissa. <laughs> All right. Shane Saylor, nice to see you on today. If you'd like to unmute, tell everybody what state you're in and how we can I'm help. I'm in Virginia, and last week uh, I printed out some business cards on my home computer and I went and I live across from a strip mall and I went ahead and handed out business cards to the various businesses. So I spent uh, doing it old school, so to speak. And uh, right. my question is exactly what is the definition of a mobile notary? Is it a loan signing agent notary or no notary signing agent or is it like a mobile notary public? Yeah, great question. And I do, I, I, I get this actually quite a bit, but a mobile notary is basically a notary on the road that is on the move that will go to uh, another location to meet a customer. 
So it's not necessarily just a, a loan signing or a, the qualification is not that you are also a loan signing agent. That's kind of a, a separate designation. You don't have to be a notary signing agent to be a mobile notary. Anything else on that that you would say, Laura or Carol? I would agree. Uh, I think mobile notary is really where you start and then you have specialties and one of them could be loan signing work and another one could be living trust and another one could be something else. But what ties it all together is the fact that you take your service to the client. Answer your question, Shane? It does, thank you. You're so welcome, thanks for being here. And you can still Denise, put one foot before the other. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Uh, Denise Hibbert, uh, thank you for being here. Would you like to unmute, tell everybody what state you're in and how we can help? Good afternoon, everyone. I'm in New York. <clears throat> thank you, Laura, Bill, and Carol for always having this forum of sharing and learning. Much appreciated. Um, my question is, is there a scenario, I do mostly general notary work, but I have done the coursework for um, loan signing. So I get calls every now and then. Is there a scenario in which a consumer calls you, they are doing a purchase um, outside of state, they have all the documents and they handle all the documents post signing, like you're not, all you're going to do is just sign. Yeah, I do those all the time. Yes. Uh, I mean, I like, those Carol or Carol. I like those better than having to scan back and do all that stuff, but I just wanted to make sure that there was nothing, you know, out of the ordinary. Nothing fishy. That they're handling all the documents. Yeah, it actually happens quite often. Um, a lot of times um, borrowers, when they hear like from their closing agent or their title company that uh, the fee is going to be 150 or 200 or $300, uh, sometimes they're like, no, I can find a notary cheaper. So the, the escrow company will say, all right, we'll send you your docs or you can download them from the portal. You print them out and you find yourself a notary. And then of course they'll call around and they'll find out that that's the going fee. So they're like, all right, all right. fine, that's fine. We're just going to take care of that. A lot of times what I find though, is that even if I'm facilitating the signing as normal, the, uh, Sorry, we got uh, somebody unmuted here, maybe. Uh, I still take control of the documents afterwards. So there's usually a, um, uh, a shipping label. So I'll drop those off as part of my service at the FedEx or the UPS store. Sometimes not. Sometimes the signer wants to take care of it all and facilitate that part of it. And that's okay too. But it's, pre uh, it's, pre it's pretty common. I'd like to add something to yes, that. Yes, please, please. Okay. Uh, first of all, when I when my new students have that happen to them, they don't know what to do. They get all shook up. <laughs> that, to was, that was me. Title and, <laughs> and signing services. So that's funny. But uh, one thing that does happen uh, sometimes is that you have the opportunity to uh, take those documents back to a title company. And even if it's 45 minutes or an hour away, Sometimes it's really a great thing to be able to take it back yourself. Always want to hand them directly to the to the title or escrow officer, and it could mean work. I've had that happen with uh, several students. Okay, that's a good perspective. Thank you. Yeah, that's a great suggestion. I just wanted to piggyback on the immigration real quick um, uh, papers. Don't you have to speak another language most most times? Not necessarily. You can oh. use an interpreter service. Okay. All right. Good Great question. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Denise. Larry Greer, great to see you back. Hi. Uh, thank you for having me back. Well, just have me back. It's great to be back. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what state are you in? California. All right. And I, I'm back with kind of a weird situation that I had a question about. Um, I, I did a buyer closing last week and <clears throat> the, the deed, they didn't attach a notary, a, a notary sheet. They just attached a piece of paper that said, notary attached acknowledgement. I'm right. like, okay, you told me what you want, but 
I've never seen a deed like that before. So I did it. And in fact, I ended up attaching California acknowledgement forms with almost all of the notarization. And I, I made a little mistake in that I thought that all the FedEx offices didn't go out at out same for next day delivery if you dropped off after five. So it was after five when I finished. So I figured, well, I'll just do it in the morning. So I sent a note to the signing agency letting them know that. They seemed to be okay with it. Then the next day, I got a frantic email demanding to know why this was delayed, why this happened. It turns out there was a specific office here in the city in San Francisco that were, was taking late drop-offs for next day delivery. So I did what I could to clean that up. And then three days later, I get another urgent text from the signing agency saying that the title company wanted copies of my, of my journal, my journal entries for this particular transaction, which, I, and I know that that's legal, you can do that in California. So I made sure to, to only send them the information for this signing, not uh, like I blocked out everything else. And I was like, and I asked the signing company, am I being punished? Is this some kind of punishment? for my having been technically late with the drop off. And they said no, that a lot of the title companies now are demanding copies of notary journals as, as part of the fee. And I've never heard of that. And I'm just wondering, what I mean punished, or is that something we're gonna to have to start looking at, at doing too, making copies of our notary journal and sending along with the document? I've heard of it. It's just not common. I don't think it is common. And I don't think a lot of title companies are asking for it, but it is happening. Uh, I don't know if it's randomly or only certain title companies. And as long as they follow the law, which is the request has to be in writing, they need to tell you the who, what, and when, then you're required to do it. I, I did it, but because I felt bad about being late. But right. This seemed a little weird because I've never heard of that before. I mean, I've heard of it, but I've never had it done. Yeah. Well, thank you. Yep, it does happen on occasion. Yeah, yeah. And, it, and it's good to know for, uh, what the expectations are. So Larry, like typically a signing that ends at five, logically we would think, well, they're probably not expecting this until tomorrow. So hopefully somewhere in the instructions, they would have told you that they want this dropped off. Like it's urgent, it has to happen because it's not standard operating procedure necessarily to go find a location that is open that late for overnight delivery. There is just an industry expectation that after like three or four in the afternoon, they're probably not gonna get docs. And if they need them, then they've gotta be able to convey that information to us. So there's a little bit of onus of responsibility on them too, right? Like if they need it that bad, they've gotta communicate that. Like, hey, I'm gonna to have to drive an hour to hit that one FedEx store that's still open at 6.30 taking these uh, packages. We've gotta know that in advance. That's a basic ABC yeah. too. I'm sorry, uh, this is basic ABC. This, uh, for those of you who are fairly new out there, you need to know the, um, closing hours, the last pickup times at your local offices. Some of them close at five, some of them close at six. So you wanna know the one that has the latest time. Right. But we've made many runs to the airport. I can tell you. Yep, yep, definitely. And then Laura, I'm sorry, um, what, what did you say on that one? I said, I'm, I'm looking at something I just typed now. So I'm trying to remember oh. what I was okay, responding to. Um, oh, I said that if they need them and it's that late in the day, a lot of times they'll ask for you to scan documents before you drop because then they're not anticipating getting them. Or they'll say, if you cannot drop, scan before you do. I've seen that. So it's only a scan situation if you cannot make it to FedEx. Perfect. Thank you, Larry. Uh, Alan Lawrence from Louisiana. Welcome, and how can we help today? I have had several uh, notes being sent back by uh, different lending companies requesting that I notarize, put my stamp on there, uh, on the notes. Louisiana is just not done. We do what's called a paraf, and we sign the notes uh, with our official signature and the date it 
and that's it. Well, they've started putting uh, the person's name, the people that are the signers' names on it, and saying that since their names are there, I have to notarize that page. Every time I send the documents back, I send them a copy of the uh, Louisiana statutes explaining why I can't do that, but they still send it back. And I've even had some threaten to uh, uh, withhold my pay or part of my pay because I did not notarize it. So any suggestions? That's interesting. Uh, and I'm not familiar with the Louisiana law. Uh, Laura, do you have any expertise on this? Very little, but I am familiar with what he's talking about. And if the company continues to insist, I don't work for that company because, okay. you know, as a notary, this is what I'm allowed to do. I stay in integrity with what my job is. And if they can't understand that, even after you have sent them the evidence that supports why you don't do that, then I stop taking work from people that are asking me to do something I'm not allowed to do. Okay. I could send y'all copies of this, the statutes yeah. if you have. Yeah, like I have it. seen that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I would like to, if you would send it to, uh, to me, we have a similar situation in Virginia. And uh, I now have something that my students uh, send back with the note to respond to people mm -hmm. okay. and that it's against the law. They don't require it. They don't want it done. Uh, and that's a notarization of a note as well, but in a different text. Yeah. Right. Uh, would you send it to Carol at notary to pro.com? I surely will. I'd like to have that for my students. I will do that. Thank you. Glad to. Awesome. Thanks, Alan. And right, that's thank quite you. a beard. <laughs> thank you. My grandkids love it. <laughs> my brother has a similar one and his grandkids love it <laughs> yeah it's fun thank y'all all right thanks alan so haley great to see you on today how's it going in texas sue haley figueroa what i be to say can you hear me yeah sure can hello hi oh there we go i was gonna say would it be would i be weird if i said i love the rain <laughs> I do too. I love it. We don't get to see it enough. This is true. This is true. It's hot out here. Um, my question is going to be kind of, I guess, quick because I'm on my way to a closing, but it's more of like a networking LinkedIn question. I don't know if that's something I can ask on this forum because it was not. Of course. Yeah. A little very specific, I guess. Okay. So I was, I finished reading your the LinkedIn book which I think is so awesome. I feel like my LinkedIn profile is like kicking butt. <laughs> All right. um, but my question was, so I'm, I'm doing your daily dues and I'm doing it on LinkedIn. So I'm like pinning or touching, getting contact with like 10 people, um, writing out with 10 people. And my question is, Hey, Sue Haley, I think we just. On, if you have someone, so Haley, we uh, you're breaking up pretty bad. Sorry. All right, we'll come back to you, Sue Haley. Kind of lost her all together. Yeah, I think so. I think fell so. into one of the culverts, and they're all filled with rainwater. Uh, but yes, LinkedIn is awesome. If that's the answer to your question, and yes, the daily dues, those ten habits I did to scale my business from making a thousand a month to twenty thousand a month, I did eight of those on LinkedIn. So yes, it's amazing. Hopefully, we'll get Sue Haley back. Terry with an I, thank you for being here. Would you like to unmute and uh, tell us what state you're in and ask your question? Hi, I am in the hot state of Florida. All right. How's My going, question Terry? is, what, thank yeah. you. Um, how important is it to become RON certified? Well, I think... Um, I think it depends on what the vision is for your business. Uh, if, if being Ron certified is something that you'd like to do, that you picture yourself sitting inside your house, being able to notarize basically anyone in the world from your couch, uh, then uh, it would be pretty important, right? Uh, if that is not why you got into the business and then if you prefer the one-on-one -on -one interaction and you'd rather be out in the field, uh, then it's less of a priority. And then from a demand standpoint, um, on the loan signing side, I'll tell you that the demand 
is not what they expected it. There's a lot more happening or that, that hasn't happened yet. So the, the demand for loan signings via remote online notarization has not hit that peak. So it's not critical for a successful business. Uh, on the general notary work side or the specialty notary work side for uh, Laura, um, there's there can be much more demand, especially for this last year through the pandemic, people have really, for those one-off documents, they've really embraced it. And a lot of people uh, have wanted to do it. There's, I think Notarize says they are, they're doing over a billion documents a year. Uh, and then there's, I don't, I think there's like 20 or 30 RON platforms now. So imagine that multiplied. So there's a lot of volume that way. Uh, so if it aligns with your uh, vision for your business and what you want to do every day, it might make some sense, but I would not do it in the beginning of your business. If you're just starting out, I would absolutely learn uh, how the loan, like I'm an advocate for loan signings first because you still have to learn how to be a notary public in your state, but loan signings gives you repetition that you don't always get in specialty notary work or general notary work. And then grow into the specialty notary work, learn that, master that craft. And then if you wanna add on uh, the remote online technology, add that on if it fits your business model. But the thing is, if you try to do it all in the beginning, it gets really overwhelming because Ron is not just notarizing online, it is tech support. You've gotta be able to coach people through how to take selfies, how to take pictures of their ID, how to upload documents. So there's a lot more to it. And if you're not skilled in the notarization part or the loan signing part or whatever it is, it can really bog you down really quick. Plus it's pretty expensive to get started. So I understand I have done probably over 20,000 closings. Oh, nice. Oh yeah. I, I've been, I was in the title company in business in New York. So I, really understand closings and title reports and the whole thing. But several people have said to me that um, the Ron business is going to be the future. And yet I go out with people and, and I can see there's so many people that really are so technologically challenged that they couldn't do that. So I just don't want to be stuck at the end you know, and, and, and panic, oh, I should have been, I should have done this. And I know it's expensive and I know it's a big deal and I don't want to do it. I'd much rather go out and meet people. It's more fun. Yeah. I, and I'm right there with you. Um, if I, so I just, I know that I don't want to sit in front of a computer. That's like a call center right. work for me. So I know it doesn't exactly. fit my business model and model. And here's what I found. There is always going to be people who appreciate one-on-one -on -one service. There's always going to be a people who don't want to deal with the technology piece and they love the, the service that we provide. And Laura, what's your take on this? Or even Carol, if you'd like to chime in, what's your, what's your take on remote online notarization? I think this, I would like to, yeah, yeah, please. I would like to talk about it because I mentioned my age. Uh, it is not easy for people of my age because we weren't raised with cell phones and computers and, and all of that. I'm having a very difficult time. I hate to admit it, but I am. Techno how I started an internet business, I'll never know. Because I, I just, there isn't a week that goes by that I'm not shedding tears because I'm frustrated over not being able to handle the technology that is always coming at me. So there's a lot of baby boomers still in this country. <laughs> And the people that I deal with and I meet a lot, and my older students, we, we all agree that Ron is beyond difficult. And we like the interaction. Uh, a lot of people, especially older people, don't have as many connections. Their children are grown and they're away. So we really look forward to interaction with people, whatever way we do it. And I, I think that it's going to be many years, if, if ever, that Ron completely takes over. I, I do. Um, I, one of the very first Ron, I told you this story before, that uh, when Ron was first out of Virginia, uh, the company called Notarize, they, one of the owners, one of the creators of the uh, first Ron uh, uh, you know, platform, flew out to my home uh, from Boston to California to demonstrate 
because I was very vocal about not being trusting with that, uh, you know, Ron. And um, they, they got started there and it's been very expensive. I will say that he just called me recently and I may have said this before on TNT, but uh, they no longer charge, there's no platform fee. They charge you as you go for documents, but there's no expensive fee for, for that. But barring that, it's just, uh, it's very expensive for you to get started with most of the platforms. And it's just the technology of it, I think will will keep it from expanding to a whole generation of people. I hope you're right. Thank you, Carol. And um, Matt would like to say something. Matt, you always have some good things to say <laughs> hey about guys. this. <laughs> Thanks, Phil. Um, Terry, you know, I share your concern. And, um, you know, when RON first started, the technology sector and the real estate sector said, oh, this is going to be a helpful tool uh, for everyone. But that has since changed. And their attitude uh, now is very different. Um, you know, the American Land Title Association, the National Association of Realtors, and the Association of Mortgage Bankers now have pretty much teamed together in an effort to um, make this the ATM machine of our industry. And if anybody know, remembers the ATM machine, it pretty much put bank tellers out of business in a matter of five years. So they have now introduced a national bill that is so restrictive that it will not only impose ROI on every single U.S. notary, but it prohibits states from legislating against it. So it's, it's a grab at states' rights, too. So we have a very big fight coming. And I think that every single notary, whether you'd like doing RON or you don't like R doing RON or you are undecided, should be very concerned about the SECURE Act of 2021. Um, obviously, I'm going to keep everyone updated on this. But like I said, we have a very big fight coming. Um, and, uh, you know, you, you need to be up, you need to be updated and, and informed on this now, because what I see happening is much like you uh, alluded to, Terry, which is uh, title companies, lenders and realtors will tell their customers, OK, here's our process. Here's what you're going to do. And that's that. So the consumer won't even get a choice anymore. Much like when I go to the bank now, if I walk over to the teller line, they walk me right back over to the ATM machine. And so we need to, uh, as notaries, we need to fight for our office. We need to do what we took an oath to do, which is protect consumers. Um, and that includes protecting consumers' rights and privacy uh, rights as well. So. I need everyone's support. I need everyone to come to attention now. This is this is the this is the calling all cars all cars calling all cars moment. I've been warning about for years. So please um, follow the California League of Independent Notaries. Sign up for our newsletter. Um, I've been working with many people across the country right now. Roger Rill with the uh, Ohio Society of Notaries. Mark. Um, Mark with the PAN, Tim Reiniger, uh, Bill with the NNA. Everyone is very much concerned about this. So um, if you have questions, please feel to reach out, Matt at mmmobilenotary.net. Wonderful, thank you, Matt. Terry, I hope we did a good job uh, giving you some perspective there. You have, thank you very much. Thanks for being here. All right, Randy Venters, welcome back. You wanna unmute, tell everybody what state you're in and how we can help. I'm from the state of Washington and I got a whole bunch of questions, but I'll try to pair a couple of them together. Um, so I did a loan signing for a signing uh, service and those people became a direct client because they're house flippers. Um, and my first question is, is they've tried to tell the title company that they want to use me and the title company has said, no, you have to use our notary. Is it as simple as them just writing in, we're providing our own notary in the contract? Yeah, um, sometimes um, I have been I have been written into the sales contract on properties before, which uh, definitely helps that. But the um, uh, usually the nature of the way this stuff works is uh, a, a title company can't force that on you. You've got um, a choice in that. Carol or Laura, have you had any other experience with that? 
my experience has been that uh, although we are listed as one of the choices a signer can make, you know, there's certain things that signers don't have any choice about. And then there are certain things we do have a choice about. And if you work with that particular title company, they say, yes, you have a choice of notaries, but it has to be from our list of notaries and you can choose one of them. And that's how they, you know, kind of get around you having a true choice. So if they don't let you write in uh, into the contract, uh, then, you know, it, it matters. It, I guess it matters on one of two things. One is you might want to ask an attorney that question because we're not legal people. Is there, can they force you to use within the confines of what they offer or can you, can, uh, do they have to let you use any notary who meets the qualifications of the notaries that they utilize, uh, or the other one is if they're not happy with being told they don't get, they don't have a choice, they might choose a different title company. And that's exactly how it has gone for me, where uh, if there's any pushback from the title company, if the client has enough power, like meaning they're closing enough deals, right? Uh, they'll say, well, well, we'll go to a different title company, but this is going to be my signing company. This is going to be my signing agent. He's part of my white glove team. He takes nice. care of business. Uh, and it's great when you have an advocate like that, but it's a big ask of people too. So it may not quite go like that. Usually a title company, even if they have the requirement of approval with them, they'll at least let you start the process so you can get approved with them as the title company. And then you can be assigned those um, assignments. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. And then my second question is, so they, um, this couple that were doing a HELOC, and uh, I'm kind of in the middle, uh, I'm in the Seattle area, I'm kind of in the middle of three counties. Um, and they were doing a HELOC through their bank, which was an hour away. They don't really have any branches right where I'm at. So they said they wanted to use me. Um, I got in contact with their lender at the bank and the lender has said, um, oh, well, we need notaries in your area because we have clients that don't want to drive an hour down to the closest branch to them to, to sign the paperwork. What would you charge? And it was a HELOC, and I just I kind of threw out 150 um, for them, and he didn't balk at it. And they've actually called me to do a couple other jobs already. Um, so that kind of leads me to my question: Is how do I figure out kind of what the going rate should be for direct business in my area? Because I know for the the signing services and a few companies I've talked to about direct business, they want to way lowball and offer way less than what I think I'm worth. Yeah, signing companies. They're taking a little piece of the action, but whenever you're uh, working direct, you, I mean, if you've got clients who say yes to $150 on a HELOC, that's a pretty good industry standard there. In fact, I would say it's even on the high end for HELOCs, um, depending on how much paperwork there, there are involved. But that's exactly what I, char I charge in Phoenix, unless I'm open or I'm getting high volume and they want to renegotiate or something like that. But in a lot of ways, it doesn't necessarily matter what, it, what the going rate is. You've got a win-win relationship with a client. So I wouldn't, I, if, if we're talking about a 45 to 60 page HELOC, which they normally are, and you're in and out of there in less than an hour at 150 bucks, that's a, that to me is a fair price. I think you've got a win-win. The only other way that you're going to get additional market information is to do market research, Randy. So you're going to call, like the traditional way of doing this is calling your competition and asking them what their fees are. And that's takes a lot of work and you never know if you're gonna get valid information or not. Plus you've got to have a, um, a notary that answers the phone. Carol, Laura, any other feedback for someone like Randy? Well, I think that if he's, if with this particular one, and I guess where I was going is where you started out, Bill, um, is remember not all signing services and title companies are the same. Uh, and so uh, you can see a range, a huge range in um, fees that are offered or negotiated for our services. And you wanna think about who you wanna work for. If, if you go to work for the dollar store 
because you know those are the signing services that people use the word lowball. I don't really like that. What I like to say is they're working at a certain price point and that's where they're doing their business. And if you choose to work with them, then you agree basically to work at that level. And if that's not where you want to be, then don't work for the dollar store. Work for something for for an organization for signing services that are a step up uh, from that. And there's a few steps up. Uh, so if you've if you've got 150 sitting there with a HELOC, that tells me that you're gonna they're not going to be taking advantage of you. They're not going to say you know I want to I want a refi for 85 dollars, right? They're going to give you a you know a commensurate pay for the work that's being ex expected. And then just for the rest of us, remember not all of them are the same and, and they work on different price points and some work on the discount. And, and so their fees are low and, and there may be a purpose for that if you're new and you want some experience, but if that's not your purpose, then maybe that's not where you wanna work. It doesn't sound like this is that place, but I just wanted to show how you wanna look at that, the bigger picture. Another thing I'd like to add is something like snap docs. When you're getting work from, from like snap docs, there's not just one entity that's taking money out of your pocket, there's two. You've got uh, the lender giving the work to the title company. The title company has been convinced that the snap docs can find the notary so they can have less employees at the title company being schedulers. SnapDocs is going to take their portion out of it, and the uh, and then when they go through the signing service, so the signing service gives the work to SnapDocs, so they get their share. By the time that you get it, you could be doing half of what they're willing to pay for the signing. Yeah, great point. And one of my favorite questions too, Randy. Anytime you're going escrow direct, any type of direct relationship, I love to ask, because they're going to ask you, what are your fees or can you send over a fee schedule? I love to ask, what do you typically pay for these? And I cannot tell you how many times it, what they are used to paying is higher than I was going to mention. Exactly. So if they come back at a price, that's negotiating 101 is never be the first one to, to offer the price. Let them tell you what they charge. If it's too low for you, say, you know what? I usually get, if they come in at, at you know, 125, you can say, I usually get 150 to 175 for these. Are you flexible? If they come in and you, you're thinking 150 and they say, well, we, we've been paying 225 for these. Well, I guess that'll work. I guess that'll work for me. Or I, I always just go with that number if you can work with that number. I wouldn't try to negotiate them up. We don't want to get greedy. We don't want to take advantage of them. We want them to love working with us. We want them, we want to love working with them. Did that help Randy? Yes, thank you. And then if I can add, kind of add, a, I don't want to monopolize your guys time, but kind of add a follow-up question. Um, so there's a local signing service um, that I do work with, but all of those jobs come through, or a local title company, sorry, that I work with, that their jobs come through a signing service. Um, and one is they've cut their rates um, last month, and they lowered, they went from $100 for a signing or a refi down to 85. Um, so I'm a little upset about that. But one of the, the title officers in the office actually asked me for my card and asked me if they could hire me directly. And I didn't really know how to answer her because all of the work I've been doing is through the signing service. and I don't want to upset the signing service. Um, and I, how would you guys address that? Because I, I didn't go to them necessarily to solicit business they're asking me if they can hire me directly yeah awesome well number one randy awesome problem to have congratulations because you're delivering uh, amazing service the uh, when you do uh, uh, offer amazing service and you just deliver on your promises or over deliver on them this is going to happen to you there are going to be escrow officers and title companies that come to you and say you know what we don't want to work with them anymore we want to work with you this is going to happen if you're, when you're doing it right, or when somebody's looking, or there's uh, the signing company is not fulfilling on their deeds, that this kind of stuff does happen. Your decision on how you handle it, I think has to look at the big picture. If you, and you already answered it because you already said, I don't want to upset the signing company. So if you don't want to upset the signing company, then the way that you would handle this is like, I have an amazing relationship with this signing company. I'd really prefer that we work through them directly and we'll just have them put me as a, uh, what do they call it? A, 
preferred uh, signer through them. And then I will get first dibs on all of your signings. And that way that maintains that integrity with that relationship. Cause I would imagine that other signing company is giving you other business too. Mm-hmm. So if you, if you do upset that signing company and you say, all right, I'm these four signings a month, I'm going to take from the, with the title title company. But then that signing company is like, oh, you just stole our customer. We're cutting you off. That could cost you a lot more. And it might, it not only be a financial loss, but it's going to make you feel different about your business maybe. And you've got to really think that stuff through because you want to be able to sleep at night. You want to be proud of what you're doing. You want to feel good about it. And we're talking about $15 per transaction, maybe a little bit more if you get direct business, but it's really to me a very personal decision that way. And Laura, Carol, I'd love for you to jump in on that too. Well, I agree with what you said. I think uh, keeping integrity in our business is the ultimate we have to always think of it that way be able to look at ourselves with respect yeah enough said enough said all right uh i think we got about eight minutes yeah thank you randy really appreciate it great questions sparked a great conversation i appreciate it uh ginger smith great to see you on here what state are you in and how can we help in texas i'm in north dallas area and i'm fairly new um but and I'm, I'm focusing right now a lot on the general notary work, but I have, um, I'm hoping to transition more into the loan signing. Um, one thing that I'm seeing pretty consistently is uh, opportunities to take assignments that are cash out refis in Texas, which would require that um, I have like a title company office or an attorney's office that I would go to. But I'm not exactly sure how to facilitate that. How would I go about facilitating or, or getting in touch with someone? Like, I don't, I haven't yet found a notary buddy to be able to know how to, to, to uh, navigate this world. But I, I would like to be able to do that because I realize that some of those are some, are sent out with some very low numbers as far as payment is concerned. However, um, experience is experience and getting my foot in the door is more important to me than, than, worrying about, you know, haggling over a few dollars here and there. So what would you suggest? Great question, Ginger. And just for anybody listening, this is a very state specific issue in Texas when it comes to home equity lines of credit, HELOCs and cash out refinances. Carol, um, for you, with your students and because you're in Texas, what's the best solution you found for solving this need for an offer. Yeah, I have I have more students in more graduates in Texas than any other state. So um yeah it's really tough to get in. The title companies don't want to lose business. They're they're not anxious to have you in their offices. Uh, attorneys feel like they might be liable uh, in some way. Uh, the only thing that I can suggest that you do just call go to any local uh, companies that you can talk to people if they have friends that are attorneys and they need to understand, and a lot of them don't, that they have no liability. You just need to be on their premises uh, to do those signings. And it is the weirdest law. It's any time that people are getting cash out of their homes, it has to be done within the confines of the title company or lawyer's office. I find that people are actually having more luck getting in with attorneys because they have somebody in their family, friends that either is an attorney, works in an attorney's office and you go, you present them, they're gonna get paid and you get to be uh, whatever, if you pay them $50 for the use of their office for 45 minutes or an hour, um, they're happy to get the little bit of income and uh, you get reimbursed for whatever you have to put out. I actually do have a family friend that is an attorney, but my question is, does it matter what type of attorney or did they just simply have to be just an attorney's attorney's office? Oh man, that rocks. That means I could actually, because I see a lot of these and nobody seems to want to take them. Yeah. And so they flood my, I mean, I get so many and, and I feel like there's, there's gotta be this niche. And so if I could figure this out, it would be a great way to get my foot in the door and start getting some, some signings under my belt. Yeah, we have uh, title companies. I've got, well, I've got some companies out that hire our graduates and they're thrilled when they uh, send, when, you know, we send them somebody who uh, 
can get into a title company or an attorney's office. Yeah, there could be okay, a great opportunity so here. Yeah, Ginger. And one of the ideas I had it for Texas, mm -hmm. and maybe, maybe a Texas notary can take this and find a way to make it work. But if you find an attorney with an RV, we're going to register their RV as their attorney's office. And <laughs> you could take that office anywhere. You could work out some sort of deal and be the notary on the road, true mobile notary, and be working under that attorney's umbrella if that can work out. A great That's idea. But the attorney have to be in the RV is the question. No, I don't think so. Cause it's just their office, their registered office. So I'm sure there's gotta be a way to make it work. And if I have to move to Texas to figure Very it cool. out, I might just do it. Thank Maybe you. I should buy an RV. Carol, I'd be totally down. I've got North Dallas covered for you. Can you add <laughs> okay. a comment to that, please? Yeah. Hey, hey there. So I read not too long ago. I'm not sure if, if it's, um, expired yet but in texas there is an executive order allowing um signings for cash outs to take place in the parking lot of the title company or oh i heard that the um attorney's office um not sure if it's still in effect i haven't looked at it recently um if um that's something that um i forgot her name the lady that was just asking about the texas cash outs yeah, Ginger. great, Wanda. Thank you. Wanda, this is Carol. I would have it on my notes to check that out. I heard that the other day. I was going to check into it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Lovely. All right, Ginger. Thank you so much. I hope we helped. Thank you. Guys, I think we're going to have time for one more question. It looks like it's Norma Riggs. No pressure, Norma, but I think you're our last question today. If you'd like to unmute, tell us what question, what state you're in and how we can help. I am in Arizona. Can you hear me? Yeah, sure can. Okay, good. Uh, Carol, yes. uh, last <laughs> week you helped me with my first expired ID, and I wanted you to know you were absolutely right. You were right on the money. <laughs> I had conflicting information from the Secretary of State and the NNA, and I did what you said, and I called them back and asked to talk to someone else. And, oh, good. But you were exactly right with your dates and and everything so thank you um oh, i welcome. bought the modern journal of notarial events i didn't find any place where it says i couldn't use it in arizona so i'm gonna use it do you know i think it works here just yeah kind of I, did. I haven't seen that. anything and the one thing i have a question is that affidavit of property value it doesn't come with every signing and um when it does, the borrower is supposed to fill out some blanks and usually what type of deed is the one that really throws them off. And I'm not supposed to tell them what type of deed to put on there. Do you know which form I'm talking about? No. I know the affidavit of property value, but if the if you've got the, um, if there's any type of question like that anyway, it's not your responsibility to fill it right. out. But if you have the deed, that's being used, which you would if it's a refinance right. or a purchase, right? You can say this is the type of deed, and a deed of trust is the type of deed that it is. If it was well, it says like warranty that. deed, and uh, you know it doesn't say deed of trust. But um, I, yeah, one of the bars refused to sign it. I told the title company they fixed it, but you know that that document has to be notarized. So, yep. um, you know, it just seems to be strange because most of the time it doesn't come. Um, and sometimes, you know, you're there and you're asking, you're calling them and they don't respond right away. So it's an interesting document though, Norma, it does not it have is. to be signed by the signer. It can be signed by the signer's agent. And that very often sometimes is the escrow officer or mm -hmm. the real estate agent in the purchase. So there's always a workaround on that particular document. So we can send a back blank. I mean, I did send a blank one time and they completed it somehow because I, I had the borrower sign it and then it had to be notarized. Yep. And they, oh. um, we can't force anybody, no matter what the document right. is, to sign it. So if they're not going to sign it because they don't want to fill it out or they don't know how right. to fill it out, then it's just. And I can't send it back. I can't notarize it if it's got blank spaces. Correct. That is correct. That's the best practice. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. You're so welcome, Norma. Thanks for being here. That brings us right up to the one hour time frame, Carol, Laura, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I love this time that we get to spend with the entire audience. Thank you for being here and growing yourself and your business on a Tuesday. We'll see you next week.